<laughs> yeah good morning all the students let's proceed with our revision on module 4 yesterday's class we have seen how to derive maximum a posteriori hypothesis by using bayes theorem and an illustrative example of how we can calculate various posterior probabilities and select the highest likelihood probability means the maximum a posteriori probability Ma sorry maximum a posteriori hypothesis which is having highest posterior probability for that we have taken an example of a patient who is diagnosed as positive means having cancer but whether really he is having cancer we should calculate based on the prior probabilities of uh, cancer and not having cancer we try to derive uh, or we try to calculate the posterior probability of a person having cancer and not having cancer when he is diagnosed as positive so in that process we found that uh, the give, um, according to the given numbers that patient doesn't have cancer though he is diagnosed to be positive okay in this um, revision will cover on maximum likelihood and least squared error hypothesis this is very important question okay so we'll ask you to explain what is maximum likelihood function uh, what is maximum likelihood approach and least squared error hypothesis explain in detail so what is that where we try to get the maximum likelihood of some hypothesis for that let us consider a problem of learning a continuous value target function a problem faced by many learning approaches such as neural network learning li linear regression and polynomial curve fitting normally so far the problems we have covered are only classification or clustering problems categorization problems in order to classify a data point into one or the other or having multiple classes okay we classify a particular data point into multiple any of the multiple classes but when you come across continuous value target function what is continuous value target function if the target function is not a class like in classification if the target function is not a category into which a data point have to be classified if the target function is a continuous valued function means numerical value say uh, predicting the stock price of uh, shares or predicting the climatic uh, predicting the temperature uh, on a particular day okay there we are trying to predict a number that is why we call it as continuous valued target function okay in such kind of problems um, which we come across in neural networks um, or linear regression and polynomial curve fitting where you uh, the data is given to you and you have to fit a best line you have to fit a best model which will explain the behavior of the training example so that that knowledge can be helped in order uh, that knowledge can be taken for help in order to predict a new data point okay in such kind of problems we may um, uh, come across this kind of um, uh, pred predictions about continuous values so a straightforward bayesian analysis will show that under certain assumptions any learning algorithm that minimizes the squared error between the output hypothesis predictions and the trained data will output a maximum likelihood hypothesis so this is normal intuition only normal idea only wherever you are making a prediction if you are trying to make that prediction as accurately as possible and trying to minimize the error in the prediction means trying to minimize the difference in the actual value and the predicted value okay that is we are going towards a maximum likelihood hypothesis a hypothesis which has more chances to be true which reduces the prediction error okay that is called as maximum likelihood hypothesis for that also we can attach bayesian um, inference idea means 
wherever you are having some hypothesis you attach some chance to it you attach some likelihood to it of becoming true for the given training examples now whichever hypothesis has the maximum likelihood that will be the maximum a posteriori hypothesis so in your previous chapters when you are for formulating a hypothesis when, when you are framing a hypothesis that hypothesis is not attached with any likelihood but in due to this bayesian inference you are able to add some confidence to your hypothesis add some likelihood to your hypothesis so that you can better uh, state about a particular hypothesis with some confidence right for that we have taken this example in this example notice the data points having x and uh, were plotted on two dimensional space x and y axis it is having two dimensions x and y in this case we can treat x as depend independent variable and y as dependent variable independent variable means that is the parameter that is the attribute which is used to predict the dependent variable that is y in this case okay so what parameters we are using to predict something they are called as predictors and which variable you are trying to predict they are called as predicted variables okay so the, um, the attributes which we use to predict something they are sometimes uh, they are also called as independent variables they are not dependent on any attributes but y is being predicted only dependent on x okay y's behavior is determined by x y is influenced by x in that case x is called as independent of any variables or independent of any attributes okay so x is called as independent variable and y is called as dependent variable because the rate at which x changes will influence y so y is depending on x so y is called as dependent variable now say in this case these values are plotted uh, this um, training examples are plotted in this graph one training example one training example two training example three training example four and training example five now these training examples are plotted according to their x and y axis now a machine is made to learn about it for this i have given an example of uh, x variable as the time spent in studying by a student and why is the marks obtained by him in the exam right so that will always have a positive correlation positive correlation means what as x increases y increases right so as the time spent in studying increases marks obtained by the student also may increase unless until he hides a phone under his book okay so in this case when you have plotted the training examples and make the machine to learn from these training examples it will notice how what change in x is influencing y in what way okay so as x value changes along this x axis y value is also changing right that is why the data points are spread here the training examples are spread here okay now according to that behavior of the data according to the rate at which x is influencing y the uh, generalized line is drawn which will fit all the training examples moderately if not accurately okay so in this case this is the line this solid line did you notice this is the line that is the linear equation or the linear regression line we call it as linear regression line which explains the behavior of the data which can be written as y equal to ax plus b so what is x here independent variable which determines y but at what rate it is influencing y that is given by this quotient a 
okay this a is called as the quotient of the independent variable which determines the rate at which x is influencing y and what is b here b is called as the error because you are trying to fit a line approximately not accurately you are just trying to estimate the behavior of the data that is why there will always be some error associated with it that error is attributed to this uh, attributed by this b um constant the constant b okay so this b is called as the error now what is your objective least squared error means what least squared error means notice here this part error is indicated by e instead of b to be more appealing let us take the value as e which indicates error in the approximation now what is this e the difference between the predicted value the predicted value is on this line and the original value is here the difference between these two is the error right now such kind of error exists with all the training examples right every training example every training example's target value is predicted now when the target value is predicted the difference between the target value and the original training examples value will be the error now what is least square error idea in order to get a better fitting model you have to make the squared errors least as much minimum as possible okay so this error see the difference between this point the difference between this points the difference between this points all this have to be minimized as much as possible in order to get the best fit of the data in order to get a best fitting model better uh, sorry um, best fitting model okay so you are squaring all of these errors this error 1 square it error 2 square it error 3 square 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 each of them the difference between the predicted value and the existing training examples value you are finding the difference squaring it adding it and trying to minimize that okay that is called as least squared error method and wherever that least squared error is minimum that is your maximum likelihood hypothesis correct because you are trying to minimize the prediction error whichever hypothesis minimizes the prediction error that will be your maximum likelihood hypothesis okay for that we have taken this example right so how how do you calculate the least squared error just sigma of all the training example value minus the predicted value whole square divided by n number of examples n number of training examples okay so this have to be minimized in order to reduce the prediction error got it and that will be your maximum likelihood this is the basic idea if you understand this you can understand this entire concept very clearly now if you have um, continuous variables to be predicted in that case instead of probability mass function you call it as probability density function in case of categorical variables or in case of classification in case of classification task you take probability mass function which is denoted by upper case p but when you are predicting continuous variables then you have to go with probability density function that is lower case p okay so what do you mean by probability density function whenever you draw a normal distribution curve like this which represents the distribution of the data then the density of 
the training examples where most of the values fall within okay that means say if you take this as the mean value now most of the values fall around this mean and very less number of uh, values fall at the extreme ends that is at the tails okay so what is the density uh, what is the uh, uh, density of the probability with which most of the values fall around the mean okay so how is that probability density function represented mathematically probability density function of x not can be given as limit of epsilon that tends towards zero 1 by epsilon given the probability mass function such that this x not is lesser than or equal to x which is lesser than or equal to x not plus epsilon epsilon is error here okay so error should tend towards infinity error should, uh, sorry sorry error should tend towards zero means you are trying to minimize the error so that it tends towards zero okay so this limit limit you are making it proceed towards zero so that x value lies between the lowest x not value or the highest x not plus some error hmm now you already know what is maximum likelihood right maximum likelihood is nothing but maximizing the posterior probability maximizing the posterior probability of d given h will give you the maximum likelihood hypothesis that is also this uh, idea that is followed in maximum uh, least squares error hypothesis now um, uh, whenever we use p to refer to function then instead of capital p did you observe here instead of capital p, which is used for classification uh, for property mass function we are using small p a probability density function because you are trying to predict some continuous values and in that case you are trying to minimize the squared errors that is minimizing the prediction uh, the prediction errors okay that is represented by small p so when you are talking about maximum likelihood and least squared error uh, hypothesis you about continuous valued Uh, target functions that is why you are using small p which represents probability density function instead of capital p which uses probability mass function in case of classification target function okay so all these derivations are um, um, very direct uh to be understood see this we have taken as the normal distribution um, uh, formula uh, for probability density function we are taking the formula of normal distribution or gaussian distribution assuming that every data distribution for a for predicting a continuous target valued uh, continuous value target function we are having uh, uh, we are assuming that it will the data distribution will follow a normal distribution or it is also called as gaussian distribution for gaussian distribution what is the formula for probability density function you have to by heart this formula for probability density function is 1 divided by square root of 2 pi sigma square that is sigma is the variance and square root of uh, sigma is standard deviation okay now you are taking 2 pi sigma square multiplied by e raised to the power of minus 1 by 2 x minus mu divided by sigma whole square what is mu here the mean mean of the normal distribution curve and what is x here each of the sample points you use okay each of the training examples values you use x minus mu means the deviation of each training example from the mean of the data okay divided by sigma that is the variance whole square this is the probability density function value for um, uh, representation for normal distribution now that value you are substituting in the maximum likelihood in order to say that 
maximum likelihood and least square error hypothesis are related concepts we are starting at a normal distribution and slowly deriving the maximum likelihood hypothesis representation in terms of least squared hypothesis least squared error hypothesis okay so this is the representation for p of x because we have given a maximum likelihood as maximizing what the posterior probability of d given h right so what is that posterior probability d given h it is nothing but the probability density function in continuous valued attributes uh, sorry continuous value target functions now for that continuous value target functions when we assume the data distribution as normal distribution or gaussian distribution we can substitute this posterior probability p of d given h with this formula for probability density function so that is given here as it is that you are substituting here as it is then why we are using this pi here instead of sigma normally we have been using sigma for adding up all the values here we are using pi because you are taking independent training examples and probability of each of those independent training examples are being calculated whenever you are calculating the probability of independent training examples you have to multiply their probabilities that is why we are using pi here so pi i equal to 1 to m you are taking value still m and Yeah, um, uh, taking the same value, uh, taking the same Gaussian distribution value here, probability density function value here. Now you are omitting some, um, uh, yeah, uh, this part. This part, did you notice? Instead of x minus mu, we are using di. What is di? One training example instance. X is a generalization. and whenever you are writing it in terms of data set and training examples you are referring to each sample point of x as di okay so the difference between the value of the training example minus the mean of all the training examples okay that is given as di minus mu whole square and this sigma is brought out by sigma square okay now this is further um, changed as h of xi this mu is further changed as h of xi why do you write like this h of xi mean of the gaussian distribution is nothing but we are telling that all the data will be distributed along this mean and there would be slight deviation according to a given hypothesis okay so you are um, assuming that mean would be equal to the hypothesis of that set of training examples that is why you are using h of xi instead of mu okay this h of xi is hypothesis according to which xi is consistent okay xi is consistent with the hypothesis that is taken so it is given as h of xi now this is represented as 1 by square root of 2 pi sigma square e raised to the power of minus 1 by 2 sigma square instead of x minus mu you are simplifying it you are uh, writing the terms more related to the concept underlying that is the maximum likelihood for that you have taken each training instances difference from the hypothesis that is built on those training examples okay the deviation of each of the training examples from the predicted value simple terms if you want to say okay so the difference between the existing value di and the predicted value h of xi okay that is given here di minus h of xi whole square that least squared error uh, sorry that squared error you have to reduce you have to minimize you have to make it le as much least as possible okay so that is um, now rather than maximizing means sometimes if you are uh, it will be more convenient to 
minimize something to reduce the complicated expression rather than maximizing means what if you are maximizing a positive quantity means you are minimizing its negative quantity got it what i'm telling you are maximizing a positive quantity means you are minimizing its negative quantity or you are maximizing a negative quantity means you are minimizing its positive quantity okay that is vice versa now based on this you are just trying to uh, and, uh, uh, write it the other way rather than maximizing the above complicated expression we shall choose to maximize its logarithm first let us apply logarithm then try to minimize okay so let us first apply the logarithm to it in order to bring it into some simpler terms so we are applying logarithm through ln here when we are applying logarithm what will happen the product will be summed up but, uh, log of a into b can be written as log of a plus log of b okay so that is that, that is why this pi product is transformed into summation here now what you are summing up when you are applying the logarithm you are just taking the constant on constant you can't apply logarithm so as it is it is written now when you apply logarithm on e this entire term will come to the base value so you can write the entire ter term by just excluding this e when you apply logarithm to log of e power minus x it will just become minus x right so that, uh, that you are writing here minus this minus this minus will come here minus 1 by 2 sigma square uh, multiplied by the difference between the training example and the predicted values square okay this is how the equation is transformed when you apply logarithm see when you have log of e power minus x it will it can simply be written as minus x right minus x log e so that can simply be written as minus x so this expression which is in the place of minus x here is written at the base now the first term in this expression is a constant independent of h whenever there is some term independent of the hypothesis it can be discarded because that doesn't have any effect on the hypothesis if that constant doesn't have h in it then it is independent of the hypothesis it doesn't have any influence on the hypothesis so that can be removed um, so you, this entire term is removed 1 by 2 pi sigma square is uh, square root of 2 pi sigma square is removed and you simply write it as minus 1 by 2 sigma square the difference between the existing value and the predicted value okay so do you did you notice how we are slowly making the maximum likelihood idea combine or resemble the least squared error idea now see we are bringing that uh, representation towards minimizing the squared error okay now from this equation what we can do instead of maximizing a negative value we can write it as minimizing a positive value okay in this case what we are doing maximizing a negative value because this is negative here you are trying to maximize a negative value or in order to remove that negative symbol we can write it as minimizing the positive value okay so instead of arg max now we have changed it to arg min minimizing what the predicted error uh, sorry the prediction error minimizing 1 by 2 sigma square di minus h of x a whole square so overall what you are doing you are trying to minimize the prediction error again 1 by 2 sigma square is also omitted because it is a constant independent of the hypothesis okay so even this is omitted and finally you arrive at this conclusion you arrive at this final representation what did you notice here you are summing up all the differences in the predictions that is difference in the original value and the predicted value according to the hypothesis hypothesis is what your best fitting model 
okay with each of the training example you have predicted something now the difference in the prediction and the original value square it up add it add all of them for each of the training example what is the predicted value and what is the existing label what is the existing um, uh, target value the difference between them find out the difference between them square it and add it for all the training examples and minimize that minimize the le minimize the squared error make the squared error least that would be your maximum likelihood hypothesis did you notice how we derived this we started at the probability density function of a gaussian distribution substituted it for the base and uh, substituted it for the maximum likelihood um, um, hypothesis value that is hml is nothing but r max of the posterior probability of d given h but in this case we are taking this posterior probability to be substituted by probability density function because we have an idea that more, all the values in the data set fall around a particular uh, uh, fall around the mean of a normal distribution that is why instead of the posterior probability we are substituting gaussian distributions or normal distributions um, value here the probability density function value here okay now that probability density functions value you are slowly transforming it so that you can minimize that representation to reflect least squared error method which would be the actual proof to say that that is the maximum likelihood hypothesis okay so whichever model minimizes the prediction error that model is the best model whichever hypothesis reduces the prediction error minimizes the prediction error that will be your maximum likelihood hypothesis okay this is how we have connected these two ideas of maximum likelihood and least squared error hypothesis in case of continuous value target functions got it students any doubts in this just practice the derivation it is quite easy you keep on omitting all the constants continuously and you just bring it to the form of least square error method okay you are starting with probability density functions formula for a normal distribution substituting it into maximum likelihood equation and slowly remove all the constants that are independent of the hypothesis and bringing it to a format which says that the minimizing of the prediction errors is nothing but your maximum likelihood hypothesis okay any doubts in this concept students Okay, then we'll go with the next concept. Okay, better you quickly write the type of questions that can be asked. i think we don't have any more time before your exam so i'll just dictate the questions in what way they can be asked like a question bank okay you can take down the questions um explain how maximum likelihood hypothesis can be used for predicting the probabilities explain how maximum likelihood hypothesis can be used for predicting the probabilities here also the derivation is straightforward okay but in this case you have a derivation like this this you have to unset this you have to remember 
you are increasing the likelihood of a data point falling into one particular class means you are reducing its likelihood of it falling into the other class understand this sentence what i'm talking about say there is a data point star which have to be classified either into this class or this class in this case if you are increasing the likelihood of this data point falling into this class say it is becoming 90% then it is uh, uh, the likelihood of this data point falling into this particular class is 90% it is that indirectly we are reducing its likelihood of falling into this class right it is only 10% that is what is given in this maximum likelihood formula h of xi to the power of di multiplied by 1 minus h of xi to the power of 1 minus di okay so whenever you take di as 1 the training examples target label as 1 then the entire term will become zero and like and this value will be h of xi okay that is proven here when di equal to 1 p of di given h xi conditional probability we get h of xi okay that is given here but when di equal to 0 means the other class di equal to 1 means positive class di equal to 0 means negative class okay you have two classes say this is positive class and this is negative class now when you have di equal to 0 then this term will become 1 and this term will become 1 minus h of x i. So what you are doing here is when you are making a data point fall into one class you are reducing its chances of falling into the other class. Okay so that is given by 1 minus h of x i. What is probability of something p? What is probability of not? Uh, what is probability of an event occurring p? Not occurring is one minus p. Same way, the probability of a data point falling into one particular class is h of x i. And at the same time, what is its probability not falling into the other class? One minus h of x i. Same, same idea is used in this maximum likelihood hypothesis for predicting the probabilities. Okay, this idea if you have probability of an event is P and probability of non-occurrence of that event is 1 minus P. If you have this basic idea in your mind, it is very easy to understand this formula. Okay, and also one more idea is when you are increasing the likelihood of a data point falling into one class, you are indirectly reducing its likelihood of falling into other class. Okay, these two ideas, if you keep in mind, you can understand this concept very clearly. And the next question can be like this. Discuss on the minimum descript uh, minimum description length principle. Have um, um, with with the example of uh, sending a message by using minimum number of bits. Okay, that is very easy. That also can be written by using this maximum likelihood hypothesis. We'll, um, get that part topic right. Hmm. Note on the next question. Explain the minimum description length principle by taking the example by taking the example of designing a code to transmit messages to transmit messages with compact code compact code means 
as much less code as possible like we do in telegrams okay then your next question elaborate on naive bayes classifier do not get confused bayes theorem and naive bayes classifier are different okay elaborate on naive bayes classifier with an illustrative example with an illustrative example for that you can take the example of playing ten, um, whether tennis will be played on a particular day given the weather conditions okay that example you can take or any other example but you should be able to um, show the calculation how a particular uh, days probability of playing the tennis or not or uh, a patient being classified as acquiring a disease or not whether that uh probability is calculated properly that you have uh, you should be able to show you can take any type of example okay so your next question depict a bayesian belief network depict a bayesian belief network and show how conditional probabilities can be calculated and show how conditional probabilities can be calculated present the next question present the expectation maximization algorithm with a simple example if at all you are not comfortable with the example given in the textbook you can take more simpler example you can just google it examples for expectation maximization algorithm or estimation maximization algorithm you'll have more simpler examples okay those also you can use and present in the exam because the uh, example taken in the textbook is little complex to understand though the underlying concept is easy uh, they have uh, just the way of explanation is little complicated so in that case you can take a simpler example and present the algorithm present the estimation maximization or expectation maximization algorithm with an illustrative example okay that will end your fourth chapter and fifth chapter questions also you can take down quickly we have 2 uh, 3 minutes more what is our fifth chapter hypothesis uh, evaluating the hypothesis right So um, explain the process of estimating hypothesis accuracy. Explain the process of estimating hypothesis accuracy. Next question is differentiate between sample error and true error. This may be a short question. Differentiate between sample error and true error next present your understanding about confidence intervals for discrete valued hypothesis present your understanding about confidence intervals for discrete valued hypothesis
right next question write short notes on write short notes on error estimation binomial distribution mean and variance estimators and bias mean and variance estimators and bias okay the next explain in detail the approach for deriving confidence intervals explain in detail the approach for deriving confidence intervals next question discuss on discuss on the methods to find difference discuss on the methods to find difference in error of two hypothesis to find difference in error of two hypothesis next question what is the process of comparing various learning algorithms what is the process of comparing various learning algorithms okay explain in detail next question explain in detail about paired t tests explain in detail about paired t tests next define ma yes ma'am can you repeat ma'am explain about explain in detail about paired t tests paired t tests next one define instance based learning define instance based learning by taking k nearest neighbor learning context means that example by taking k nearest neighbor learning example by taking k nearest neighbor learning example explain about locally weighted linear regression explain about locally weighted linear regression next write short notes on radial basis functions write short notes on radial basis functions next question 
illustrate the concept of case based reasoning illustrate means with an example again illustrate the concept of case based reasoning next question present your understanding about present your understanding about reinforcement learning and the applications of reinforcement learning and the applications of reinforcement learning applications of reinforcement learning is not there in your syllabus but explore it okay applications of reinforcement learning highlight the important tasks highlight the important tasks in reinforcement learning that is under the learning task you have learning policy learning um, uh, finding the highest accumulated reward points okay all these comes under this highlight the tasks under reinforcement learning last question describe the q learning process describe the q learning process in reinforcement learning with an algorithm and illustrative example with an algorithm and illustrative example okay so wish you all the best in your exam do well we'll meet after the exams for further revision okay bye thank you ma'am thank you ma'am Okay.